So it's been a while since I've done a video, uh, so I figured I would go ahead and go through how to beat match on vinyl, uh, as of pretty much the other two videos I've done are mainly uh, controller oriented. Uh, I've actually started from vinyl, so I uh, figured I'll go through and, and kind of show you the essence of beat matching and, and how, to, how to DJ on vinyl. Now there's a whole lot more to doing vinyl than just this, uh, I mean you can I can devote an entire video just to balancing your, your tone arm. So I'm just going to go through the basics of beat matching on vinyl and I'll probably do some other videos uh, if, if people are interested on how to you know set up turntables, choosing turntables, what needles you should choose, uh, a lot of its preference. Uh, so let's just go ahead and get into uh, beat matching. So uh, pretty much I've just selected two, uh, these are like trancey Halsey type records, um, trance really. Uh, so I've, I've chosen these because they're they're straight beat. They're they're four fours, which is dun, 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 over and over again. So it's just those, you know, that same four four beat um, that you hear in a lot of clubs. Uh, and you know, there's there's variants of that beat also that uh, House uses and and psy trance and different types of, of music. Uh, I chose these uh, instead of the uh, broken beats like break beats and, and drum and bass because they're a little harder to, uh, when you're beginning, to, they're a little harder to, to pick up on and they're a lot faster, uh, some of them, uh, which would be a lot harder for a beginner. Uh, so uh, let's just listen to what the beat sounds like. And uh, with, with vinyl too, uh, just a note. Uh, you should always uh, drop the needle straight down. Uh, you should never move back and forth. You'll scratch your record. Uh, it takes a little bit of practice uh, to really get comfortable with the the needle. Uh, you're also going to want to make sure when you're spinning that you don't actually slam into the head shell. Uh, that's one reason why these tables are, are are set up like this. It's been called battle style, uh, and it, essentially what it, it does is it makes it less likely for you to hit the needle, and it gives you more more room to work with on the table. Uh, otherwise, you're you're pretty much going over the needle the whole time. This is my preference. Uh, I, I can use them either way. Uh, most people can, but uh, I would suggest this if you're going to do anything with manipulating records past just mixing. So uh, here's the beat uh, we're working with on the right. That's, that's your beat on the right, and our beat on the left is... And that's, that's not actually a straight beat, that has a little more of a... Um, has some snares and, or uh, some uh, cymbals and all in it. But uh, it's still basic, basically the same beat once you get into it. So the goal of beat matching is to make it so that this, that is the same speed as this, which is in this case significantly faster. And so uh, I've, I've seen some videos. Uh, there's this this girl who does four CDJs. I don't remember her name. Uh, I'm sure you've probably seen her. She dances around. Uh, pretty much uses sync button. And she has a video trying to, to claim uh, how to use vinyl, and it, it's obvious she's never used vinyl. Um, she seems to be under the uh, under the assumption that this is is is, is moving your BPM, which it's actually not. It, it's doing relative. To, it's how many revolutions per minute, and then you're <clears throat> you're speeding up and slowing down uh, a percentage based on how many revolutions per minute your your table or your platter is spinning. Uh, with records, this is not a set produced speed, and really with CDs, it isn't either unless you put on the, the BPM function. Uh, these particular tables do have a BPM counter in them. Uh, as to how reliable it is, um, actually, I think I tried it just out of curiosity one time. It's actually not that far off. Um, I never use it though, so I can't really uh, <laughs> Can't really give you a, a review on that, but uh, these are great tables. These are uh, Newmark TTXs, 
uh, there is pretty much uh, these are the USB models. I have an older TTX, the the first one they ever put out, and it's still running after like 15 years. So, I mean, they they are good tables. Uh, I I highly recommend them. They have higher torque than uh, 12 Technics Techniques, however you want to pronounce that, 1200s. Um, uh, they have an ultra high torque mode on these, uh, and medium torque and low torque. So. Uh, really really nice tables um, so pretty much what you're trying to do is use your pitch fader here and um, or I've heard this called so many things over the years but yeah it's, it's your it's pretty much your speed of your platter that's turning um, you also notice on some turntables uh, this has a little um, like a strobe light and you can actually look on the all t almost all tables I've ever seen have these little lines because they're sectioned out and you can kind of tell as you move it up and down it'll actually go up and down too i think there's ways to kind of kind of beat match using that i'm not going to show you how to do that because i don't do that i just do it by ear which is how i recommend you learn so what you're going to want to do and this is going to take a lot of practice like a lot of practice but uh you're pretty much get this speed in your head and, and do it to your clip. Clench your teeth, bite, or like click your teeth, um, you know, tap your foot, whatever. Move your body. Don't worry about it, people being an idiot. Uh, and most of us DJs do. Uh, <laughs> at least you'll be doing something instead of throwing cake at people and holding your hands up in the air. Um, so, pretty much, get, get the speed in your mind. And what you're going to do is you're going to try to take this speed and remember how fast this is going and put this at the same speed in your head and how it should sound. So this should sound like da 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 and it sounds like so that's a little bit fast um, and if that isn't apparent to you don't worry it's it it takes a while um, but I'm gonna actually what you what you'll be doing when you're actually in a club or it, well if you're just now learning to beat match you shouldn't be in a club for a while but uh, on this particular mi mixer I have this is my left and this is my right cue and this bleeds in between uh, there's some mixers that you actually push cue buttons on it this is a different or this is a battle mixer or whatever so this has you know left and right so what you would normally be doing is you'd be playing this playing this and then you'd cue this so this will be going through these and what you can do is especially if you're in a loud environment it's not so much like in this environment but in a very loud environment you'll, you'll actually pretty much be predominantly listening like this so you can actually bleed over this so you can kind of balance back and forth and focus on this sound versus that sound and filter them out so that's that's kind of like using your headphones so normally that's how you would that's how you would do this, uh, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna do it wide open uh, so you can hear what I'm doing. And now there's a couple ways to do this. Um, one is to do like this, um, you know, and as it's as it's going, push forward and backwards and pull back and you know slow it down and try to make the beats match. Uh, that's an effective way to do it. Um, the best way to do it though, that you will actually be able to do on this or CDJs or controllers or anything else is, uh, it's called pitch writing, or I've heard it called a couple things too, but so essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna try to, rather than touching the record to speed up and slow down, you're actually gonna do this uh, slider. And so if you think it's, it needs to be faster, you're gonna go up, and then just a little bit more from where you started. So it's gonna be, you're pretty much doing, imagine this is one of the sliders because I'm, I'm not sure if you can see it very well. So say you're here and it sounds like it's supposed to speed up. And the battle, battle style, uh, that's gonna be down in this case. Um, it, it depends on what your, what your, how your setup is. If it was the other way around, it'd be to the left. Um, and it can really depend on your tables and how you have them set up. So let's just say for the sake of this setup, uh, down is faster and up is slower. So we're in the middle, which is zero. And this 
is faster than this one. So we know this need, this one needs to go faster, so we're gonna push this up. That'll make it go faster, but we're gonna push it up a lot until we hear it so that it sinks. And then when we do that, we're gonna slow it back down, not where we started, um, but a little bit faster, or even where we're starting. If, if you think it's just out of sync, like if you, th if you think it's just like this one's hitting um, you know, a full note and this is on a quarter note and you just need to move them. So you'll have this one. And uh, if, you, if you've ever seen Serato, this, it has a, it'd be a good um, thing to look at what's going on. So you essentially have four beats on this one and then on this side you have four beats. And if they're, if this one's faster, it means that the beats are, are pretty much coming in closer together. And if it's slower, it, it, it pretty much spreads out. And so what you're trying to do is make it so that these are both spread the same so that the fours are on the four. Or so that each beat is on the same beat. And you can actually do this and they'll be what's pretty much out of sync where the beats correspond but they're, they're not. They're kind of out, or they're out of phase essentially. So if that's the case, you can just do that and put it right back where you started and it will you know, kind of move them back into sync. And these, these you know, the, I'm using the four pattern, but you can actually go ahead and back. And uh, you can actually have entire, when you get more advanced at it, you need to, act, you, you'll actually be syncing um, or, or beat matching phrases of songs together so that they flow in and out of each other. But that's a little more advanced, and I might do a video of that later. So what you're gonna be doing though is, it needs to go faster, you're gonna do that and then back down that and back down and just keep doing that and then if you go too fast you can go slower and you just keep on doing this until it's it sounds like it's about the same and gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until you get the actual speed just about where it is and at this point you can make minor adjustments uh, you know on the platter if you can actually get vinyl uh, contrary to popular belief you can get vinyl exactly synced walk away for a couple minutes come back and it'll still be in sync now it is going to drift out eventually um, a little bit normally it, occasionally you get lucky and it won't but it's going to drift out a little bit just because the way vinyl is you're dragging across a record so that's slowing the record down the the different grooves pull the record at different speeds and then um, you know also if, if you have dust on the record or something that'll, that'll cause even if they're in sync and they're spinning the same speed uh, you know minor imperfections will throw a vinyl off a little more than, than it would a CD player, because CD player is all digital. So uh, so let's just go ahead and I'll show you uh, how to do this and I'll start, I'll start this one out and I'll sync this one to this. So okay, so you've got this playing and normally this would be on here and then we're going to sync this and then slowly fade it over. In this case, I'm going to show you what will actually happen if this was in the headphones. I'd go to the beginning of the record, find the first downbeat, and actually these are a little scratchy, so I'm going to go into the actual beat. I'm going up and down, up and down, up and down. And when you get really close, you'll find that you can leave it there for a while and you won't hear any difference. So that's pretty much. And of course, you won't be talking to a camera while doing it, but. That's thing. And now, when you get to this point too, you can hear how it's still drifting off a little bit. So, um, you know, you can just slow it down a little bit. It's like, you know, you know, like these have little percentage things on them that I usually don't ever look at that much unless it's like really close. And just if I want to do, I use mine on, I put mine on plus or minus 20 percent. Whereas, you know, other most turntables will go like plus or minus six or something. So these are very, very, very sensitive. Uh, the way I have them set up. So uh, occasionally I'll look at the, there, there's a little digital readout on these if I'm running them that high. These will go up to 50%. And 
And usually, if you're going that high, I mean, you it, you know, just touching it will will put it at you know three or four pitch you know percentages. Uh, so you know, if but yeah, if it gets that close, then you know you can start doing very minor adjustments on the records. I mean, uh, I, I it depends on my mood. Sometimes um, you know I'll touch the record, sometimes I won't. I, I know people who swear against it, and you know whatever, do whatever works for you essentially. Uh, so let's see what else. Um, so yeah, that that's that's essentially, and it's just practicing uh, doing that over and over again. And I mean, pretty much what I was just doing is the. Pretty much just slowing this up and down until the beats are, are matching at the same time. Uh, you also notice when you do this, it will it will alter the pitch of the record. Um, now there there are methods of doing this where um, if, if you move at the right time between a beat and there isn't a sound going on, it will actually hide the pitch uh, difference. Uh, but it it's it's kind of tricky and that's it's that's way more advanced than this video. Uh, you can also, um, you know, there, there's people who use pitch walk uh, so they can speed up and slow down s songs. You can actually do that on vinyl too. Um, I actually don't have these set up. These are a little, f well, I'll try it. Um, these are a little far apart. I usually wouldn't do this with, with you know, them out like this because it's going to be kind of hard to get to. But uh, I'll try and show you what I'm talking about. So they were basically the same speed and I'm just kind of doing that just to show you that it can be done um, <laughs> it's very it's very very risky very tricky uh, on a live setting and obviously I normally wouldn't be doing you know this uh, within that far apart if I was doing this I'd, I'd normally have them this close but I have a controller under here so um, I just didn't feel like taking it all um, so that's that's how you um, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Use vinyl, pretty much. So, um, yeah, it's it's all in, it's all in these right here, and uh, yeah, the biggest thing is just learning, learning not to slam into this this head, and uh, also, uh, generally, you'll notice on the vinyl, uh, you know, nowadays they have these these nice little, um, you know, readouts to show you all the beats and all. Vinyl has that too. And I don't know if you'll actually be able to see this. Um, and you know, some of you are like, "Well, yeah, we know this already." But you know, uh, for the people who haven't really ever been exposed to vinyl, uh, I don't know if you can see on here. But there's there's pretty much a, a little lead in, and then you can tell where the breaks of the record are, and where the different song parts are. So generally, you'll have like a like a lead in here, and then you'll have like a little um, kind of the the build up of the song. Then you have like a main song, then a break, then kind of a, a lead out. And what you're going to generally want to do, especially with vinyl, and this is very important with vinyl because vinyl, um, you know, a lot of the digital formats and CDs, um, well, these have a little bit of scratches on them. Uh, <laughs> uh, these are really old. I got these um, when I used to work at a record store uh, used, but um, Central Records in Charlotte, they, it's not open anymore. But uh, generally, what you'll try to do is take these sections and um, you know, if this is a build up and then a breakdown, a lot of times when this first breakdown and the right back into the build up, about right here, you usually have the other record come in at that point because this is going to start building up as this is like in the main of the song, and then when it breaks into the outro, it's right when this breaks into the pretty much the build up and into the main of this part of the song. So right as this is fading out, this is going to like kick in hard, and then that'll be done about the time this one drops into the um, fade out and then by then or well, usually before but by then you'll have another record so uh, that, that'll be going into the 
fade out of this and uh, you know you can you can mix it depending on how much I'm into a set I've mixed just you know uh, main part into main part you, you can do a lot of things with, with these but it's, it's very important with vinyl to stay on top of that because uh, you, you can't loop like you can with CDs uh, there's a lot of searching involved with vinyl that you know it's not just type in I want the song it's there it's on play it's it's a lot of searching finding the record coming you know back up beat matching everything there's no sync button there's you know it, it's a very very hectic thing but it, it's very much worthwhile and even if you don't have the access to vinyl uh, learn how to do this this method um, like this by ear uh, and, and it actually is, is counterintuitive as it sounds it will actually help you using um, sync buttons will actually get you better or not sync buttons necessarily but actually using trying it yourself and then using uh, a sync button uh, that you know is in sync now now to keep in mind sync buttons are not always accurate and sometimes they're, they're completely off and that's why you need to learn how to do this by ear is because I've seen DJs that are just like oh sync button you know, it's it sounds fine because it's synced, and it's just completely off. And everybody in the you know every person in the place who knew how to beat match and could do it by ear. We're, it, I mean, well, actually, everybody in the place is just like that is completely off. And it's because they just started relying on it too much. But if if you're having problems like determining, oh, this is too fast. Oh, this is too slow. I can't tell. Um, go to a computer. I mean, it, the end goal of this is to learn how to do it and to actually know how to do it. You know, how you get to that point, it, it's not really that, you know, <clears throat> the skill is what's important, not how you get to it, not how you learn that skill, uh, as long as you learn the skill. And, uh, you know, I, I started on vinyl, uh, and when time code came around, I used, uh, the very first time code was, uh, uh, final, shoot, what was it called, Stant, no, it was, yes, final scratch. Uh, and it's what became, with through a couple of legal disputes, it's what Tractor, Stanton and Tra Native Instruments and Stanton had a anyway. Look it up. It, it's it's kind of the predecessor to Track or to not to Tractor, but to Tractor Scratch, which got merged into Tractor. Um, but I, I noticed once I started actually, they have these little sync or uh, these little phase meters on them, and um, I mean this is when I was I've been DJing for 15 years now, but you know I mean I've only been DJing for maybe three, four, five years, and, you know, I was a good DJ, uh, but, you know, there, there were very intricate, um, you know, things that the human ear, until you train yourself and really try to listen to something that minute off, uh, you just kind of never noticed it, and when I started using these things and, and paying attention to these phase meters, you know, I got to the point where on vinyl without the phase meters, I could get, you know, two tracks synced and they just leave them there for like five minutes and walk off and come back and they, you know, require like one little nudge and it's it's completely on and nobody can tell the difference. So, uh, you know, if you have problems selling, you know, I can't tell if this is too fast, I can't tell if this is too slow, you use time code. Use use time code or use you know, use some kind of software and, and actually pay it but actually pay attention. Don't just hit sync. Actually try to do it by ear and look at the Actually, look at the the meters, it's, especially Serato. I, I don't use Serato, and I don't like their fanboys, but um, you know, it's, it's a piece of software. Uh, same thing with Tractor. You know, I, I love Tractor, but you know, <laughs> I mean, shoot, you know, I'm not tied to Tractor. Um, but Serato has an interesting um, feature where it'll actually show the two beats over each other, and you'll actually be able to visually see what I'm talking about when you speed up and slow down. Uh, it'll actually stretch them out and it, out when you slow it down like the beats will actually stretch out on the screen and when you slow it down they'll actually get you know closer together and you'll be able to actually see them see the see the two tracks over each other and kind of visualize what I was just showing you on the record uh, Tractor also has something similar to this that's a phase meter and it'll actually um, kind of show you this little line that goes back and forth and it'll pretty much do the same thing without the without the uh, waveforms uh, it, there's advantages of Tractor over Serato um, Tractor also has the ability to uh, half and by two, or multiply by two, the the beats put on the grid, so you can kind of grid on the fly. Um, like I said, um, and on some of my previous videos, you know, I I learned the tools of trade, uh, you know, just out of curiosity. So just like I know how to warp Ableton, um, you know, on the fly, just from figuring it out. So. 
Uh, but yeah, vinyl is definitely a, a good thing to learn. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut the video here just because I'm going to start rambling even worse than I am. But uh, let me know if you have any questions or if you'd like me to go into further details on the vinyl. Uh, and let's see. Well, yeah, I, th I think I'll leave it there for now. And, and if um, if there's more interest on this, then I'll actually go in. I can do some uh, drum and bass and, uh, you know, different genres and go into mixing multi-genre, different uh, tempo genres, anything you guys want to see. Uh, I pretty much know how to do it. Uh, I've been DJing vinyl for about 15 years, so uh, mixed genre vinyl. So everything you can do on... Uh, on MIDI controllers and CDJs, you can do on vinyl. Uh, I know because I can do it. So, uh, and I know scratch DJs who are even like or way better than I am that have been doing it for 20, 30, 40 years. So, um, well, thanks for watching, and I hope this was informative. And let me know if you have any questions. Uh, subscribe if you liked it, and I will see you next time.